Welcome to the Intuitive Hour with psychic medium, author, and intuitive life coach, Michelle Beltran. The Intuitive Hour will empower you to learn how to magnify your intuitive voice. Listen in and expand your understanding of what it means to be psychic and how to awaken, amplify, and trust your inner voice. Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is the Intuitive Hour. Awaken Your Inner Voice. I'm your host, Michelle Beltran. I'm ever so delighted that you are all here with me today from wherever you are in this world during these especially unique times. Thank you for being here. Before we begin today, I'd like for all of us to take a collective Inhale and exhale, breathing out all of the to-dos and the ongoings of life and the world around us today. You'll come back to all of that as we are complete. All right, breathing in and breathing out together. Excellent. All right, let's begin. Our topic today, signs that you are a psychic medium. This episode is for those of you or friends and family of those of you who have felt different or misunderstood. Did you wonder if you have extrasensory gifts at some point in your life? Perhaps you've had some unexplainable experiences, but you're unsure what they meant. And in fact, you may not even be sure if they were psychic experiences at all. Did these events make you feel different than everyone else? or that you were misunderstood or didn't fit in. If you thought you were nuts, take peace in knowing that you weren't. Early on in my own life, I often found myself throwing up my hands at times. I did this because I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what was happening to me or what it meant. I was sure I was just imagining things. Does this sound familiar to you? Did you have vivid dreams or daydreams or visions that came to pass? Perhaps you saw shadows occasionally and didn't know what it was. If you did, it's okay to embrace this. You're not different or strange or unheard. Let's clear all this up today. Let's clear the air and let's put everyone's mind at ease. Let's talk a little bit now about very common traits or experiences. Someone who has a propensity to be psychic may have. By the way, we are all psychic. It's just a matter of opening that door and using this ability and listening to it. All right, here we go. In life, especially as a child, did you feel different? Did you feel that you didn't quite fit in? as we've already talked about today. You might even feel this now in life. Perhaps you can't quite place these feelings. You have always had a knowing there was something different about you. You might notice, as a fallout from this, that you yearn for real, true, deep connections with people 
in your world. And it may even be that you can't seem to find your tribe or the people that you resonate with fully. Also, do you see things in your peripheral vision, images or pictures, that might present even like a mini-movie? But, as you reflect on this further, you find that this actually proved to be accurate, things that you see in this way. This is called clairvoyance. We've talked about this at the podcast before. Be sure to revisit the clairvoyance episodes, opening your third eye. You might also recognize that you see orbs or shadows, maybe sparkly or flashy lights. These are all an indication of that clairvoyant ability, which means clear seeing. All right, do you pay attention to your dreams? Do you feel a bond and a connection to that dream space? If so, you probably understand that dreams have an unfathomable ability to deliver very profound, accurate spiritual insights and guidance. Do you have frequent, vivid dreams? You may even recall experiences of astral travel or have vivid dreams of past lives or even people that you've never met. Each form of a dream is a message. If you're in tune to this knowing, you have a lean or desire, interest and curiosity about that dream space, your psychic medium ability may be in bloom. So listen. All right, moving on. Do you notice that you pay particular attention to your inner voice, which we call that gut sense? And do you listen to those urgings and nudges? That gut sense ability is called claircognizance. It means clear knowing. You just know something, but you don't know how. So claircognizance messages come in a number of ways. You might notice they present in inspired ideas, also in your dreams, through automatic writing, while drawing or even playing a musical instrument. Any one of these creative means can bring in this knowing, this gut sense about things. Often, messages present while in meditation or while giving or receiving intuitive or psychic readings yourself. All right, you actually also, if you're a psychic and or have a lean or propensity to this, you may recall seeing spirits or passed over loved ones at a very early age or even now in your life. Children are very connected to the spirit world. It's not so long ago, after all, that children arrived to this earth plane, and so they are very sensitive and still able to see and feel spirit on the other side. Further, they don't yet hold deep entrenched belief systems that it's not possible or even ridiculous to connect with spirit. In fact, it's quite normal for children to play with seeming imaginary friends If you had spiritual experiences like this with loved ones on the other side at a very early age, or you sense the presence of spirit as an adult, you absolutely could have mediumistic abilities. 
All right, moving on. Do you notice that you may pay attention to your body and are in real tune with it? Emotion is a highlight for you. You feel it. You feel the emotions of others. This is an empath. Empaths very often experience emotion of others around them. In fact, many empaths are natural healers and will feel the illnesses, aching, pains, or physical symptoms of others when they are near them. This is an indication that your ability is ready to open. Do you hear voices humming, buzzing, or whooshing kinds of sounds? Perhaps you hear musical tunes and jingles or experience ear ringing. Ear ringing is a classic clairaudience indication, which means clear hearing. These are very natural sounds and are nothing to be in fear of. Remember that they can seem like they're inside your head, these sounds or outside, as if someone were right there talking to you. When that happens, it's nothing to be afraid of. It is just your soul speaking to you and your own intuitive and psychic abilities ready to be born. Do you awaken at the 2 a.m. hour feeling restless, anxious, or ready to get up? This, too, is a very unique sign that intuitive development is ready to begin. This time, this wee hour, is a vortex of sorts and a time at which we are most receptive to receive information psychically or spirit interaction. So pay attention. Do you notice that you have a strong affinity toward angelic energies? Or you might even feel like angels were near you as a child. You sense a relationship and an affinity to angelic spirits, even archangels. Spirit energies vibrate at a unique level. Think of it like a super fast frequency. If you could sense that energy at an early age, it's highly likely you are indeed psychic and connecting to these higher angelic energies. Light interference. Have you ever noticed strange electronic phenomena happening around you? Better yet, are you turning on and off streetlights when you walk by? Do electrical appliances flicker or turn off and on when you're near? Perhaps you notice that you can't wear electronic watches because they just stop working in time. This is a very real phenomenon, and it happens because your vibration is so high. It's that of psychic energy. Again, this is called light interference. It's a real thing, and if you're experiencing this, you very well are on your path to opening those psychic abilities. All right, do you receive guidance and intuitive insight through your body? We know this as clairsentience. It means clear feeling. I've talked at length on this topic at this podcast, so do revisit those episodes if you're experiencing clear feeling or body phenomena. Clairsentient messages 
can present through your physical body and actual body sensations. Body messages can felt be felt either outside or inside your body. You might notice that you feel a touch on your shoulder or an itch on your skin. These have meaning. If you'll pay attention, you'll receive that meaning. From inside your body, for example, you might notice a twinge on your belly or an ache on your foot. You walk into a room you have never been in and instantly you get chills, you shiver, or you notice the energy in the room is different or heavy. You might find yourself saying, it feels odd in here, or in turn, I love how it feels here. So clairsentients speak about feeling. Begin to notice your language and notice your body. Again, this is your soul speaking to you through your psychic sense, and it's ready to emerge if you'll allow it. Do you feel the presence of spirits? It might be or feel like someone is right there with you, but in spirit energy, not real human form. You are sure someone is there. Sometimes this will manifest in a feeling like you're being watched. When this happens, notice your emotions, as you may feel a shift of emotions and overcome with an out-of-place sadness or even glee that is not your own but connected to that spirit presence. Yet another sign, your psychic ability, your medium ability, is wanting to open. Do you notice that you need quiet times in your day? You need to slow down. You have to make time for solitude, taking advantage of opportunities to contemplate the mystery of life, life and existence, or even on a simpler level, just what you experienced an hour ago. That desire to breathe and slow down and have solitude is also an indication of your empath ability and your psychic ability. All right, do you find that you understand animals and that you communicate and bond with them easily? In essence, you get each other. Is there an animal that captivated you as a child or that you feel a deep connection with. Notice what animals you see repeatedly. Perhaps you already do. When this happens, consider the animal trait characteristics. There's a message for you there. Which animal most closely associates with your personality? Are you seeing that animal a lot? Most likely you are. So simply begin to ponder these questions further to help this animal communication aspect of you grow. That you are in tune with the animal kingdom is an indication of your spiritual, psychic, intuitive self wanting to open through animal spirit. The connection to animal kingdom is indeed an indication of the psychic ability. We just want you to listen and open that funnel. All right, do you notice that you cherish creativity? putting time into feeding that creativity. Artists, authors, musicians, 
and the like are accessing the higher realms as they open to and merge with their creative essence. Psychic ability is creative essence. It's intertwined. Mozart, in depths of his expression through the piano, was firmly affixed in psychic functioning. Hence, his own psychic ability. We receive messages of intuition and psychic learning and insight through writing, playing an instrument. Use this pathway to your benefit. Are you afraid of the dark? Does the dark bring out an otherworldly knowing within you? Well, you're not alone. This is very common. Many people with unique psychic abilities or who are beginning to explore their intuition more have a very similar fear and actually prefer to sleep with lights on. Did you, at any point, feel a strong bond to a loved one after they passed? I was very close with my own grandmother, and when she passed, I felt her near very often. She became a guide of sorts for me. It was unmistakable, and I knew she was present, helping me and those around me with all of our healing. I received signs and symbols, seeing her name and birth date. It seemed constantly. That was my validation. I smelled her perfume in the air. Do you have a unique and special bond with a loved one where you were experiencing similar sorts of things? Even long after they pass, spirit will visit you. If you are getting these spirit visitations now or as a child, pay attention. Your psychic self is knocking at the door, wanting you to open this. Do you feel that family and friends come to you to perhaps divulge their life issues and problems? You always seem to give the right advice and at the right time. And sometimes you don't even know where what you're saying comes from, yet the right words at the right time and the right counsel just flow. Sometimes you don't even recall all that you've said after the fact. You see that those you help are soothed and that they too feel a sense of deep fulfillment. Why is this, you ask? What is it you're doing? What is it you're saying? How is it that you could possibly be helping them? The reason is because you are smack dab in the middle of channeling the divine. That's your psychic ability. It comes through words. It comes through counsel. And it's often effortless. Let that be your proof. You have a lean towards psychic ability. It's coming through words and counsel that naturally flow. And it is divine. Do you notice that rules and regimen are stifling to you? Is freedom essential? 
Does the idea of being told what to do, when and where, loathe within you? When control of any kind is met with great resistance, strict regime, regimen or procedure and guidelines, and this is a challenge to you, that too may mean that your psychic ability is ready to flourish. A psychic often beats to their own drum. They create and carve new paths. They do things different outside the box. They need their freedom. They don't need to be told what to do. All right, do you find that you're easily overstimulated? Meaning, you just don't care for loud or crowded places. Bright lights, strong odors, extremes to your sensation, to your senses are just too much. Airports, zoos, amusement parks, very sensory rich places make you want to sleep for hours after you experience them. You just need to take a rest after experiencing these kinds of places. This is happening because you're an empath, as we mentioned earlier. We also call this highly sensitive and or clairsentience. You are very sensitive to energy. A classic indication of a psychic ability ready to emerge. And finally, psychic ability often runs in the family and is generational. It's not necessary, but it does happen, as we know, and that is a clear indication that you too are psychic or have a lean towards it. Most psychics were in fact raised by a psychic or someone with such tendencies. So give notice to this. Was your mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, whoever it was, take a look back. All right. Now that we've talked at length about the various signs indicating that you may be psychic, you also want to know what being psychic doesn't mean. First and foremost, your psychic ability is much like a faucet. You are in charge of it, and you get to turn it off or on whenever you want to use it. You will not get psychic messages and images all day long. If you're clairvoyant, we talked about that uh, previously. You're not going to get bombarded by spirit visitations, or psychic impressions. You get to choose. You are in charge. And as you develop your abilities, you will learn how to turn them off and on with ease. Next, you don't suddenly have the ability to read others' minds as your psychic and intuitive expertise grows and gets stronger. Being psychic is more about self-actualization and it is a means to your own spiritual evolution and growth. Breathe that truth in. You will change and grow internally. That's the priority. Yes, seeing psychic images and impressions and knowing things is a beautiful, beautiful divine gift. But at the core is your spiritual growth. 
as a medium, able to see spirit, know that it's okay to call upon spirit when you'd like to connect with them. Again, you're in charge. If you have mediumistic sorts of abilities to see the other side, you're not going to get bombarded by spirit everywhere you go. You're in charge communicating with those on the other side and when, and you get to call upon them. Should you have a visitation and you're not ready, you get to say hello and goodbye to them until you are. You may decide you don't feel a calling to use your psychic gifts, and that's okay. Not everyone does. There are lots of people who are psychic or psychic mediums who can connect to the other side, yet they are very content to stay in their corporate professions, their nine to five jobs. Being psychic doesn't mean you're going to use it daily or for other people. It can be used just to support your own self and your own life choices and having clarity about that. That said, should you decide to put your wonderful newfound gifts to work, remember that if you use them, if you read for others, you always must ask permission. The one thing that you can offer without permission is grounding another. Be sure to listen in to a previous episode on grounding. It is a foundational psychic development tool along with running energy and neutrality or staying in the center of your head. All are wonderful episodes to revisit or to take a listen for the first time. While you might hone your psychic abilities and practice with family and friends, remember to give this ability the level of respect it deserves. Give yourself time to practice and get better. If you offer psychic insight, do so with care, discernment, and only when it's requested. It's an especially exciting time as you realize and explore your psychic abilities. You will have moments where your jaw drops in delight. Spirit visitations, when you have one, will cause you to drop to your knees in absolute bliss that you were so fortunate to receive such a visitation. There will not be words for it. It is an ineffable thing. It is the most divine sense of grace and love and light. You may feel like you want to tell the whole world these things and offer help to everyone now. Wonderful. Be mindful, though, of slowing down, taking your time, and allowing the pure awesomeness of your gifts to just take shape. Let it take care of itself. It will. It is much bigger than you. Give it space to create and shape in the way that works best for you. Resist telling the whole world you're a psychic medium. Again, it is an exciting time and you'll want to, but you can share the magnificent beauty of it all in time as you feel fully ready. Remember, we are all intuitive. We are all psychic. It's just that some have this ability stronger than others and or 
Some are just not inspired to discover this part of themselves yet, and that's okay. There are things in this world that we can't understand. All around us, things function without explanation or permission. Even the sun rises and sets without our input and would do so whether or not we were around to see it. There are concepts we just can't explain. Unconditional love, devotion, honesty, and sacrifice. If we are serious about making the most of our lives here on earth, we will endeavor to find and be our truest selves. Tapping into your psychic ability will help you find that truest self you seek. If what has been presented here today in this episode resonates with you, if any one of these things raise your eyebrow, or you feel a connection to or experienced, use the information to find a new and more expansive you. With that, we will bring this episode to a close. Thank you everyone for being with me here today. I look forward to meeting with you again. Love and light to you all, wherever you are during these unique times. With any questions, as you know, reach out to mbeltran at michellebeltran.com or give us a call 800-607-1710. Thanks for listening to The Intuitive Hour with Michelle Beltran. If you like what you heard, please share our podcast with a friend. And be sure to visit michellebeltran.com to get Michelle's popular Develop Your Clairvoyance ebook.